Hi there, and welcome back to Water Child Tarot. My name is Sarah, and thank you for joining me for today for this look at different tarot storage systems, specifically uh, ways to store individual decks. Um, I could do a video on how to store many decks in one place, if that's of interest, but I think that's going to be a little bit less universal, so I, I thought I'd start here. Um, this is something that has been on my mind, um, and that I've been wanting to talk about for a while. But in the last six months or so, I've found some new to me um, kind of tarot deck uh, storage and delivery kind of um, devices. And so um, I've gotten some different experiences and I just wanted to kind of run through um, the differences today. And um, while a few points I'm going to make are, I think, authoritative, uh, most of this is going to be personal preference. So please feel free to take this with a grain of salt. You may have other preferences and there's nothing really wrong with that. Um, but I do have some my own strong opinions about this and I'll tell you why I prefer certain uh, storage devices of, uh, over others. So um, let's jump right into it and I'm going to go from worst uh, option to what I consider the best. So we'll, we'll kind of go up the ranks um, that way. So the worst way to store a tarot deck is to put a rubber band around it. Um, and this is my, my one sort of authoritative claim here. Um, rubber bands are sticky, they're grabby. If you put them around just a stack of cards, not around um, cards in something, but just a stack of cards, they can bite into the edges of the cards um, and they can be difficult to get on and off. You're likely to bend a card trying to do that or catch a corner. Um, and then over time, they lose their elasticity, so they lose their effectiveness for holding a pack of cards together in the first place. But they also start to break down. And if you were to store a deck with a rubber band on it, eventually the rubber band would melt. It would get sticky and crusty and gummy and dried on there. And then it could really, you know, create a problem when you try to remove that substance from the cards, you could cause further damage. So please don't use a rubber band on your tarot decks, period. Um, I would say an alternative to this that's inexpensive is simply wrapping them in a piece of office paper and folding the edges up like you would uh, wrap a present or something. That would be preferable over using a rubber band. Um, so that's the first method. Um, and yes, I have called other people out on their channels, hi Meg, um, <laughs> for using rubber bands. Don't do it. Um, okay, the second uh, worst is a gauze or muslin type of drawstring bag. Now, I don't like drawstring bags at all, and I'll talk about why. Um, but here you can see that this muslin provides no protection for these cards at all. So it's it's basically like they're just out in the open. They just happen to be inside this see-through bag. They don't provide any UV blocking. They don't provide um, any kind of dust or anything from getting in here um, or moisture. If you were to set this down and set like a sweating beverage right up against it or something, that moisture would come right into this bag, no problem. The other problem that you can see clearly here is that when you have a deck in a uh, drawstring bag like this, the cards do not stack one on top of the other. They tend to spread out and kind of slosh around in the bag. And what this does is creates places where cards are overhanging and then they can easily be bent if something were to push on there. So if I were to take this and throw it into a bag and it was getting all jostled around and things were mashing on it, these cards that are overhanging the, the main brick here could get easily pushed and, and bent and damaged that way. So you might say, oh, well, you know, I've got, I've got this other bag that has a better um, method for getting things in and out. Um, and where did it go? It's under here. You know, here, how about this? You know, it's not see-through. Um, so that's good. It does at least block UV light and probably um, most fabric tends to have sizing or some kind of chemical on it to stabilize it from the factory. And what that does is creates a slightly water repellent surface. So this, this could be a little bit better, but there's some problems with this bag as well. So if I show you putting cards in here, right, and it's okay with a few. So there they are. 
There they are. I can close that up and be on my way. Same problem, there's so much extra room in here that they can slosh around and get bent. The other problem is that in this particular bag, there's a rough edge here all around the inside. So when you reach in to grab your cards out, if you don't get all of them, look right there, they can snag. So now you're gonna be bending that card as you try to get it out of here. So I don't like drawstring bags. Um, I do have another one that is, well, a couple that are better finished. So here's this one, right? And it's, it's a velvet, it's nice and soft. The inside is doubled over, so it doesn't have any uh, rough edges here on the fabric to get caught. But this bag is made out of stretch velvet. Well, what's in stretch material? Rubber, right? Some kind of rubberized compound that can break down over time and again if you were to leave this in you know a hot car or in a closet for years eventually the the rubbery component of this fabric would start to break down and it could either shed all over your cards or get kind of gummy as the the material starts to break sound break down so you still have that issue and you still have the issue of this being outsized for the size of deck if you put a standard uh, tarot size deck in here, I don't think that would work very well. Now, I don't mind a well-made bag as kind of backup if you want to put a boxed deck into here, and I'll talk more about this in a minute. Um, that's an option, but you know, these things do cost money usually. Um, this one I got for free, free with purchase, which is why I have it. Um, but you know, I don't think they're worth spending money on. And again, this is just my opinion. Um, so you might say, well, instead of a drawstring, you know, I could get a, a better fitting something with a zipper on it, right? Um, and look, this one's lined. It doesn't have any weird stuff going on inside. And you can get tarot sized ones. This is not, this is just like a cosmetics bag or something. It's not really a, a tarot storage, but it's the only one with a zipper that I have. So I thought I'd show it. But I don't like zippers because again, the cards can slosh around. They can get near the zipper and then you go to open or close it and you get a card edge right up against the zipper and it can cause fraying and tearing on the card edge. So not a fan of those either. So next up we have Tarot's Tins and these are quite popular both um, the make playing card ones that you can get customized. This is the Mara Loon Tarot and it had the option to either ship without any packaging or with a tin and I did get the tin option. Um, these are well made. They're nice thick um, aluminum I believe and the lids stay on. They have a little lip here, so they actually click into place to hold, to hold the deck in place, and it's not gonna fall out. So it does have some nice aspects. You can also get tarots in a tin from US Games, and there are several titles. Um, this happens to be one of the ones, I think I have three of these. Um, but these are nice, they're good, they're good for travel, and again, the lid is tight-fitting so it's easy to keep it on there. Um, and of course these do block all manner of invasive uh, environmental factors like sunlight and um, messy food and water and dust and all that. Um, so they do protect your cards to a degree. However, this thing is almost hermetically sealed and so if there were any moisture or anything trapped in here, let's say you had um, you know, slightly damp hands and you've been doing a tarot reading and then you put the cards right back, that humidity is going to get trapped in there and it could cause warping, it could cause other issues. Um, the other thing is that if you leave this in a hot environment, this tin will get extremely hot and it's going to start cooking the cards inside it. It's going to become like a little oven. So whereas things like um, fabrics can breathe and let humidity and air flow around your cards as they're being stored. Um, and then paper can also do that. Tins don't have any breathability. So, you know, I question the long-term kind of archival safety of this kind of a storage method. Um, I also, again, find them expensive. Now they're included um, in the price when you buy one of these tarot and the tins, which aren't expensive. I think they still run about 12 or $13. So that's not bad. The buying a separate tin, um, and customizing it yourself on make playing cards. Last time I checked was $15 US, so multiply that out by your collection, and you know that doesn't add a certain amount of expense to, uh, to storing this way. Um, 
And the other thing I don't like is that you have this lip on the edge of the tin, and I tend to store my decks vertically like this. So um, imagine that you're looking at a bookshelf and this is what you would see, right? Um, these are like the edges of books. First of all, if I have multiple tins, I don't know what's in each one because I can't see the top because that's not how I store them. Now I could write on here with marker or somehow decorate or add a label. That would solve that problem. But um, the lip makes the tin sit funny on the shelf. It kind of leans back, so it's not as secure on the shelf. And it also pushes against the decks next, next to it. So it's not ideal. It might seem like a picky detail, but because of this leaning um, aspect, this is one of the reasons that I have not been uh, collecting tins. I did have several made and I actually ended up giving away um, some of them. Some of them I used for other purposes, including I used one for a travel shrine. So when we were over in England this summer, um, I took this one, which was meant for the Spanish tarot originally. I did this design myself, um, and I took it with me. However, you can see right in the top there, I don't know if you can really see how bad it is, but there's this huge dent right here where this tin was in my bag. It was getting jumbled around, and something smashed into it. And so that's, you know, I mean, I, I don't know. I haven't tried, like, hammering this out or whatever, but that's, like, permanent damage. It doesn't bounce back um, the way that cloth or uh, paper would. Um, did it protect the stuff inside? Sure, but it also, like, pushed... You know, this was could be pushed into the items that I had inside. Um, and yeah, you can see on the inside, there's that big divot there. So sort of mixed review in terms of um, this actually protecting the contents. I, I can't tell if this is like being in a suit of armor or being in a car that's got crumple zones. <laughs> um, I guess that's the best analogy that I could make. I want to point out that if you buy one of the tarot in the tins, you don't have the labeling issue because the tin is decorated all the way around. So you do know what's in this tin, even if you haven't personalized it. And, you know, these are very handy for travel. Like I said, um, sm small decks of cards um, in, a, in a nice rugged tin are a great thing to take on a trip. So um, I like them for that reason. All right, so next up on my pickiness factor, and I do like these better than drawstrings, are what I'll call cloth wallets. And these come in a variety of different form factors and styles. Um, the ones that I am gonna show you today are all made by a artisan on Etsy. Her shop name is called Moonlit Fay, And she makes these in a variety of fabrics. I actually have several of her tarot wallets, thanks to the generosity of my mother, um, who has always supported uh, her and then I'll often get extras that she has or duplicates. Um, so these are really nice. They're they're slightly padded, so it's not just two pieces of, of fabric. There's some batting in here um, that adds a little bit more padding. And as you can see, they have this nice magnetic clasp um, that just clicks into place there. Um, they don't come apart. So if this were getting jostled around in a bag, it would stay closed, which is nice. Um, you still run into potentially fit issues like you would with a drawstring bag. So if you have a lot of extra space, um, these cards, this is the Grateful Dead Tarot and it's a little bit oversized and it fits very snugly in this medium sized uh, bag that she, she does. And the cards can't really scooch around in here very much. So there's, there's little chance that the corners or the edges are going to get pushed down um, from being out of alignment. So that's good. However, in my deck here, um, this has a much looser fit. You can see all the extra room in there. And so the cards can kind of slide around a little bit, uh, even when this is closed and potentially get out of alignment. Now, I don't worry about this deck so much because it's plasticized. So it'd be, it would be very difficult to crease this one. Um, the one tip I'll give you is that this uh, clasp right here is metal and it can push into the face of the card that's on top. So I always put my decks in here um, with the backs um, towards this clasp rather than uh, storing them like this with the faces of the cards next to the clasp. Um, that just adds a little bit of extra protection uh, for the artwork on that side. 
So these are okay. Um, my problem with these is that they're extremely expensive. Um, her her decks or sorry her deck bags go for around uh, thirty five dollars American, and um, that's a lot of money. You know, it's more than a mass market deck costs. Um, I would not want to spend money on getting a custom bag for every deck in my collection. That would be several thousand dollars worth. Um, and, you know, people don't. I mean, um, that's kind of an extreme uh, situation where you're going to be rehousing every single deck that you own. But um, the other thing is that you have to find fabrics and hope that, that you know, whoever is making these. Obviously, um, Moonlit Fay is not the only person making these. You can go on Etsy and other uh, craft sites and find tarot storage uh, bags of all all styles. Um, but they all kind of run in that, you know, 20 to $40 price range. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's definitely an extra investment. Um, the other thing is that you can get bags that have a tie instead of a clasp. So it gets rid of this kind of danger situation. And you can also find bags that sort of open like this and then have other fabric here that uh, folds out. And then you get like a little sort of built in spread cloth. So I like that design. That's pretty clever, and if you don't have a clean place to set your cards out, but you want it, let's say you're at a cafe table or something, you can protect your cards by just opening this up, folding this out, and then reading on top of that. Um, and yeah, keep your cards safe. So there are some nice aspects to this. Um, oh, but what I was saying about the fabrics is that you have to hope that the artisan um, has a fabric that will sort of go with the deck so that you can remember what's in each one. Um, otherwise, you're going to have, you know, maybe just your favorite colors or something and then you're saying well what's in this blue bag versus that blue bag um you know i have to i have to look in them every time if you only have a couple of them then you know it's easy to remember but if you were to get you know 20 or 30 that aren't really distinct or don't really go with the theme of the deck that you have then it's going to be harder to memorize uh what's in each one so mixed reviews on the the tarot wallet but better than some other options now, I will say that I think um, just using found fabrics, or this is an old dinner napkin that I dyed, um, but if you have extra fabric laying around, um, or that, you know, you can go to a, um, like a thrift shop or something like that and buy an expensive extra fabric, you could either make yourself um, bags to save money, or you could um, just put a deck into a piece of fabric and then wrap the fabric around like this and then just tie it with a piece of string or ribbon and that would actually provide um, if you did a better wrapping job that would provide a lot of security for the deck because the cards are all going to be tightly bound in a little stack they're not going to be rubbing up against the thing that's um, holding the fabric on because they have the fabric to kind of cushion between that and the string and um, this will protect from, you know, UV, it'll protect from minor spills um, or dust or debris or that kind of thing. So I almost like this more than spending, you know, a lot of money on something like this. Um, if you have if you have something like this uh, available to you. All right. So we've covered rubber bands. We've covered various kinds of fabric and um, tin storage. So let's talk now about tarot boxes, um, which is, you know, the most common way that um, tarot cards are packaged and distributed and um, probably the most popular way to store decks. Uh, and first up on the list, we have the much maligned tuck box. Um, I have a number of these in my collection. I actually have grown to appreciate them in some ways um, because even though they can be a little bit of a faff to get open, um, and people talk about tuck box rage and not being able to, you know, get this flap up and then getting frustrated and maybe, you know, causing damage to the box. Um, I think if you can just be a little bit patient when you're opening and closing things, um, you know, the tuck boxes can hold up over time. Um, they're not going to be the most sturdy because in order to be folded like this, they have to be made out of a thicker, uh, thicker paper stock or, or card stock rather than a cardboard that is very stiff. Um, but what I like about tuck boxes is that generally they fit the deck very well so the cards aren't sloshing around. These have a little bit of extra play because I took the booklet out that originally came. 
So that's why there's a little extra space in here. But anything where the cards are sitting in a nice compact stack will protect them. This, of course, would also protect from dust, UV rays, uh, you know, food spills or water, that kind of thing, especially if you noticed it right away. Um, this box is coated with something, and so it's going to repel all that, all that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I think, you know, they're sort of, they're very reliable. And um, of course, they have the printing on them so that you can see what the deck is. Now you'll notice this one has a wrinkle in it. So they do wear down, they do, you know, they can get crushed, um, they can, they can have problems like that. Um, but I feel I still think that they add some protection and you're less likely to damage your cards getting them in and out of here than you are in and out of some of these fabric options that I've shown. So I'll, I'll say that for tuck boxes and that's why they're kind of in the middle of the pack here. Um, I think what people generally like more than a tuck box is a two-piece box and I have a bunch of different examples here of various qualities. So I'll talk about two-piece boxes next. So the worst two-piece box um, doesn't stay together uh, because the lid is too loose and um, also isn't deep enough to hold the contents of the pack. So uh, this um, deck from Fournier, this box is a bit flimsy um, and you can see in the bottom it's um, an acid type of uh, paper that is yellowing now. This uh, was first produced in the 1970s so I'm not surprised it has acid wood pulp as the base, but that's coming in contact with the contents of the box. It's not this coated part. So that's why I usually keep this pamphlet in the bottom and then I have to put the cards on top. Um, but the problem is they don't quite fit in there and especially with this pamphlet things can slide around and if the top comes off in a bag or something like that then you really are going to have a mess. You're going to have cards all over the place getting bent and stuff like that. So I would take a tuck box over a poorly constructed two-piece box any day. Um, what you can do to kind of mitigate this is again, either tie a string around the box or put it into a wallet or a bag for extra security. So that's what I would probably do with this guy if I needed to put it into um, a purse or a backpack or something to take it with me, I would wrap it up in something else just to keep it more secure. Um, here we have a, a two-piece box that has a slightly different design. So it has a slightly tighter fitting lid, but not really. This isn't going to stay on again in a bag. It's going to come off pretty easily. And I call these jewelers boxes because they remind me of the type of box that you would get jewelry in. You know, open the top and there's a bracelet or something in here. They have this cut back um, edge. So instead of the box going all the way, the lid going all the way to the bottom or near the bottom, they have this cutaway here and this is to allow you to hold the bottom and remove the lid um, but the problem is that again like the tin that kind of makes a weird lip on the shelf and so this box also does not sit up and unless it's wedged between two nicer boxes i don't entirely trust the lid to stay on it's going to fall off and then look cards are going to fall out and become bent and make a mess and go everywhere and get damaged and blah 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 so not really a fan of this kind of two-piece box either. Here we have another design for a box from Los Carabeo, and I've seen other companies use this as well. Um, this is sort of a historic look, I guess, um, even though tarot cards would not have been manufactured with boxes back in this day, they would have been wrapped in paper. Um, but this box has, is a two-piece box. It just has this little lid that pops off. So again, this thing can slide off um, just through gravity or through getting jumbled around in a bag so I wouldn't necessarily trust it on its own um, but it has this and then it has this little cutout where you can grab the cards um, ineffectively these these would need to be a lot deeper I think actually to, to work well but the cards are not crammed in there so they can just slide out so you just tilt the box and catch the deck in your hand and this is okay it's very sturdy and thick so it definitely would protect from denting or rubbing or, you know, getting dropped or something like that, um, as long as the little uh, lid stayed on. Um, what I don't love about this is that it's very easy to kind of carelessly not get the, cor the corners in and lined up. And so it would be easy to kind of cram a card in here and get it, 
you know, something like that, like get it caught on the edge and then and then damage it, trying to get it back in the box. So you really have to go slow with this kind of thing and pay attention as you're taking the cards in and out. But it's not terrible, um, and it does provide a lot of protection, and it and it looks nice too. So it fits the deck really well. So let's talk about some slightly better made two piece boxes. And this is the classic two piece box. Um, this is the one that this box wish it was with a nice tight fitting lid and plenty of room inside for the contents. So this is the Moon Baby Tarot. Um, and you know, there are a number of decks out there on the market now. This two piece box design has gotten quite popular, I think based on you know YouTube reviews and, and uh, people here on TarotTube going, ooh, I love this box, it's so well made. Um, so you know, thank you to, to both indie deck creators and publishers for, for listening to us and, and looking at our preferences. Um, I do like this design. Again, the lid stays on fairly well. You can hear that vacuum, and it's not going to stay on completely. But if I push this on here and threw it in my bag, I wouldn't worry about this coming apart um, in transit. I think it would stay on. And this is very thick, dense board that this box is made out of, so it could certainly take a beating um, if necessary. It fits the cards very closely. And so while they're easy to get in and out, they're not going to get stuck. Um, they're also not going to get uh, graded against the sides or whatever when I'm taking the cards in and out of the box. I have another similar design, but it's oriented the other way. So instead of the top sliding off like this, this is a vertical uh, slipcase two-piece box. And again, I have seen this becoming more popular. Um, I think Liminal 11 packages a lot of their decks this way. So I don't know if you could hear because I was talking, but there's a ton of friction and um, vacuum in here because this is such a greater surface area that you're pulling the lid off. So it's kind of comical. You can just watch it slowly come out with gravity. And uh, this, again, would stay on in a bag. Um, it does protect the cards very well. Um, similar in some ways to this deck, it's just that this top piece is a lot smaller, whereas this one takes up the entire uh, height of the deck. But similarly, it does protect the cards, and you can slide them in and out pretty easily. This one also has a book, a little hardbound book inside, um, so I thought that was a clever way to package things. Um, again, what I don't love is that you have to kind of carefully line up the edges and make sure you're not going to catch something on the edge there. But again, not bad. All right, so we've made it to my top choice of box. And my top choice of box is going to be one that has some kind of a connected lid on it so that you don't have this extra piece floating around that you have to keep track of um, or put somewhere you know if you're doing a reading you do this and then you take the cards out and you have two pieces of your box now obviously you can stick your box back together but then you have to open and close it multiple times that's creating wear and tear so what i like is boxes that have a connected top um, however some boxes with the connected top are better than others. So let's talk about one that's sort of, you know, pretty good but not great. Um, and that would be our oversized box with a connected top. So here you can see um, you can open this lid and there's no extra piece floating around. This just kind of hangs on here. And then you have this booklet on top and then you have the cards in this sort of well um, of, of flimsy paper that's already starting to tear. And this is to hold the cards and protect them from sliding around and getting all jumbled up. Um, and you have this nice ribbon to help you get the deck out. Um, but I find this a bit awkward to use. I find it a bit difficult to get the cards out of the box um, because the box is oversized. And it's also hard to store because it takes up this much more room on my shelf. I would rather have had a smaller box and a, either a separate booklet, that would have been fine, or you know, this is a very thin booklet. I'm sure they could have shrunk this down a bit and gotten it into a smaller box with the cards that wouldn't have required this well and this extra paper and packaging. So this is sort of a mediocre attempt, but certainly not my favorite. 
Now, sometimes you get lucky and you get to find boxes that are not Terra boxes, but that work as Terra storage devices. And this is one um, from a pack of stationery that I used up and I thought the box was great. You know, it's this heavy duty, hard box with a flip top lid that is slightly magnetic. So it's not super strong. If I shake this, it'll come open, but um, it does have this magnetic closure like that. So it stays open, I, I mean, sorry, it stays closed when it's not full. And um, it's just a nice uh, box. And the theme happened to go with, this is my copy of the Gaian Tarot, which is not a standard tarot size, so it won't fit in um, other kinds of off-the-shelf uh, packaging that I could get. And so I just keep it in here. Um, and because the box is a little bit too big, I also keep this piece of silk in here just as a sort of a bumper or a buffer um, to keep the cards from sliding around too much. And that works really well for me. So be on the lookout if you, um, you know, if you send greeting cards to people or uh, if you have friends who um, are into that kind of thing, ask if they have extra um, of these magnetic lidded boxes because I think they can be used for all kinds of things, um, but including uh, oddly shaped tarot decks is one of them. All right, so we're finally down to my two favorite uh, storage box types that I really do think work well. And here's uh, a design from James Eads. This is his Cosmovisions tarot. I think all of his uh, tarots are packaged this way. And I have a couple of other uh, decks by other artists that are in this, uh, this vein. So this is a pressure type of fitted lid. You really have to pull on it to open it up, but again, it opens up to the side. And then here we have the booklet, but again, the booklet is basically tarot card sized, so it fits in this much smaller box than, you can see the size difference right here, right? So that takes up a lot less storage space on my shelf, which is nice. Um, and then inside, the cards are nestled down here. They're easy to get in and out. There's enough space that you can get them in and out with having to, without having to rub them on the edge of the box. You just tilt them in, they go right in. Um, and then the little booklet goes right on top. And I really like this style of box with, with the lid attached, so I don't have to keep track of it. And for the grand finale, I offer you the magnetic closure um, attached lid box. This is an example uh, that's Tarot Sirene from The Wandering Oracle. They have a couple of different decks out that use this style of box, but I have seen it um, from both publishers and indie deck creators, and I really like this style. So again, the box stays in one piece. Um, now you can see the little magnet doohickeys on the edge here. Um, I don't know if you can see that, they kind of stick up. So that might bother you, in which case maybe a pressure box is more your preference, but I don't mind that and I like the way that they snap shut um, and that this magnet's on the side. So it's not just the lip of this that's magnetized, it actually wraps around this whole part and um, keeps the box secure. I can shake this and get the cards out, but I really have to shake it vigorously. So just um, sitting in a in a bag or you know going along on your travels with you, it should stay closed and protect your deck really well. So yes, uh, if I had um, you know the the power, um, I would probably uh, see to it that all creators of decks um, use this type of box. Um, to, to store and distribute their decks, but of course it's not up to me. So I would love to hear your thoughts. Are there any other kinds of um, deck storage designs that I've spoken about here that, um, that you have, the, uh, anything different that you have in your collection, or what are your preferences and why? Um, comment below with your reasons. I'd love to hear that. And next up on the channel, we're going to talk about tarot storage, but it's going to be a little bit of a tutorial um, because I'm going to show you how to make your own boxes, um, which can be handy if you get things that either, you know, didn't come in a portable box or that came in a subpar kind of uh, situation that you want to make a better storage for. I'm going to show you how to do that. So until then, be well, take care, and I'll see you around. Bye.